Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Views from the Sideline podcast. It is me, Akamresh, as always, joined by Daniel. And today we're just going to have a shorter podcast as we are basically in like the deadest part of the, uh, of the NBA offseason where nothing really happens. But there's there's some things we would like to talk about. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to discuss is uh, some sad news that came last week was that Bill Russell passed away at 88 years old on July 31st. Uh, he died peacefully in his home, according to his family. He was a, an NBA great, an 11 time NBA champion, which is the most ever in any professional sport. Uh, he had five MVPs, averaged 22 and a half rebounds per game, which is insane, and much, much more. Like he was the first African American professional coach. He led the Celtics to two titles as a player coach. The finals MVP is actually named after him because of how much he would win uh, at the biggest stage. He's considered the greatest defensive player of his era and definitely one of the best of all time. And he's also the winningest player in NBA history in the playoffs. So, I mean, uh, just anything you want to add about Bill Russell and his legacy, Daniel? I mean, I think that like a lot of people like over, I like, think that he's overrated just because no, I think everybody under, like, I think he's actually one of the most underrated guys in the league because no one really recognizes that although his era might have not, like, he, although his era wasn't like the strongest, he still won, you know, 11 championships, which is insane. Like you think about like LeBron, who's won four, Michael Jordan, who's won six, like Bill Russell's won almost like three times the amount as LeBron, like two times the amount as Michael Jordan. So, um, and he might've had a, some good players on this team, but he didn't have like a full on like dynasty, just like maybe like, I don't know, like Steph Curry might have. So, I mean, it's definitely sad. And I mean, he at 88 years old, I mean, 88 years old isn't something tragic. I mean, it's the average age for someone to die, but he's definitely a legend. Yeah. And uh, I think, I think it's great. Um, What he did also outside of the court uh, for the NBA, he wasn't just a great player on the court. Obviously we talked about him being the first African-American head coach in sports. He was a lot, he was seen a lot with like Ali and other black athletes at the time uh, trying to, you know, push for equality in both sports and just in life in general. So uh, just a, just a legend overall. And I think that, I think I saw something kind of interesting. I was like, the Celtics should, uh, the league should retire his Jersey, like across the league. I mean, I don't know if we should, that should be done, but I think something just to honor him should kind of like how they put 24 on all the jerseys for Kobe. I, I think something like that should be done for Bill Russell personally. Yeah, like they should do like a tradition in the All Star Game. Like if like every year somebody like like a famous legend like passes away or dies, like they should like put their jersey number. Like Bill Russell wore like what number six? Like every single player should like wear number six or something like that. I don't know, but um, I think it would be a cool tradition, and I think people. I mean, it would definitely bring attention. I feel like when everybody and like the legends die, everybody actually starts to think about what they accomplished. Like when Kobe died. Everybody was thinking about like how he, how he made an impact on the court and off the court. And now with Bill Russell, everyone's kind of thinking about what he did and how he's actually one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, kind of moving on to the only really bit of offseason news that there was uh, is Kevin Durant's trade status. So the new situation actually is kind of like Ben Simmons almost, where they're like, he's probably not going to get traded in the offseason. Like if you remember last year after the – after the Sixers got lost the round, I lost the Hawks. I think it was like midsummer. They the reports started coming out like, oh, Ben Simmons does not want to play for the Sixers anymore, and um, yeah, but he didn't. He didn't get traded until the trade deadline, basically for Harden. So I think that the, the, the it's a similar situation is going on here from all the reports. Like um, people are saying that he's the Nets are going to try and have him play. I mean, I don't know if they can force him to play or have like Kyrie talk him into it, doing it or something like that. But they're going to try and have him play, try and compete for a championship because they are a championship contending team when he plays. So um, we'll see what happens there. But in terms of like favorite teams, kind of, I think you're going to like this, Daniel. The favorite teams, so first one obviously is the Celtics with uh, with Jalen Brown, you know, some package with him and some picks for Kevin Durant. Then the Warriors getting him back because the Warriors actually have to like, they have to re-sign pool. They re-sign pool, but they have to re-sign Draymond and Wiggins. And people are thinking like they'll re-sign Wiggins, trade him for Durant or something, and do something crazy there. And then the third team in the standings, who has come up from nowhere, is the Toronto. Uh, yeah, that's where he's going. 
<laughs> I think it's like a package of like Siakam plus some of their young players and a bunch of their picks for the next few years um, would be something that they send over. Like Achoa would be in that and Siakam and like three or four first round picks, definitely like a minimum. Um, but, and then obviously to round out the teams is the Blazers uh, where he would join Damian Lillard and they would trade away like Anthony Simons and some of their other young talent and maybe a few picks, obviously, of course. But I think the Raptors one is kind of interesting because out of all these teams, I mean, obviously the Celtics and Warriors both made the finals, so it'd be really weird if they got them, um, which is why I think the Raptors are actually the most likely because, like, they were a team that uh, <laughs> they were okay, but they weren't great in the last season. That's not very nice. <laughs> they were good. <laughs> they were okay. They were six seed. We're the five seed, actually. Yeah, yeah, five seed. But what I mean is, like, I think that it's more likely that he goes to a team that's not at the top, personally. Yeah. So, any thoughts on if that happens? I mean, obviously, I want him to go to the Raptors, but, I mean, especially with his age, I mean, we, we would be trading away a lot of our young guys. So, it might be a little bit risky, but if he wa- if we want if we want to, like, get another championship, if we want to get, like, one, maybe two championships, I think it would be good because although Siakam is good, obviously, KD is, like, one of the greatest um, – currently in the nba so um i think having like a lineup of like van vliet gary trent like kd and anobi and then like scotty Barnes or something and then you have like your veterans and your like, young guys coming off the bench like like malachi flynn he's been playing in like a lot of those like like you know recreational basketball leagues in the offseason like he played in the true league like he's been like the greatest like one of the greatest people to ever play there now because he scored like he scored like 75 points in one game he scored like 50 points in the Drew League or something like that. So he's been going like off. So hopefully that can like translate to the NBA. Maybe not 75 points in a game, but like, uh, definitely like putting up good numbers and being a good backup for Van Vliet, especially if, you know, we'll have to include somebody. And in I mean, we've had guys who've been good in the, in the um, summer league. I mean, we, we are a center that we draft. So I think if we trade away at Choa, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a big problem because we'll still have Scotty, who's our rookie of the year, and Anobi. We'll have we'll still have Chris Boucher. We'll have, you know, our center that we drafted. I don't remember his name, but uh, apparently he was good in the summer. So I don't know. I think the Raptors, just because like he, they're not the best team out of these four. Maybe they're better than the Blazers, but the Celtics and the Warriors obviously are. And I saw, and I don't think he's going to go to the Warriors to be honest. So. Um, I think that the and I think the Celtics should not trade Jalen Brown because they just had like a really good season. They should just keep building momentum. So yeah, Raptors and then Blazers is a little bit confusing to me, but I could yeah, I guess it's possible. So. Yeah, I think you know what I think it's like. It's basically like it's kind of identical to Kawhi, like when he was with the Spurs in 2018. And it's basically like, would you do another Kawhi trade right now? Honestly, because like, I mean, it worked last time, so. I mean, personally, I would just say yes. Like, if the if the Lets are like, all right, you want KD? I'd be like, of course I want KD. And, like, Van Vliet, KD, Scotty Barnes, if you could keep that together, that's an insane uh, trio right there. I think that's, like, a top – that's probably the first seed, honestly. Um, yep, definitely. With, with Nick Nurse as your coach, too, and, like, I don't oh, know. Yeah. Um, I think that's a – like, they would be a really good team. Um, I think I – don't, I don't think anybody really could beat them outside of maybe the Bucks. Yeah. No. What? No. The Bucks. Holiday, uh, Chris Middleton, All Star. That's they won the title when they were healthy. Yeah, but they didn't win it this year. Yeah, because Chris. Who, who did they even lose to? They lost the Celtics in seven. Uh oh, wait, I remember that. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't know. The Bucks can be really good or really bad some days. I don't know. When we when we played the Bucks in the regular season, like we haven't lost to them. Like we didn't, I don't think we lost the regular season game to them last season. So I think we're fine. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I feel that also one kind of one last thing to add. Do you think that they're they're gonna try and trade for him now or they're gonna wait till like the last day of the trade deadline and then trade for him then? What do you think is more likely? Um honestly, I think I mean, realistically, I mean I don't I'm not an expert on like these big trades, but probably pro- they're probably gonna wait for a little bit. Like I think Masai Jiri said that he likes where our team is at right now. So if we wait and then we see how we're going to – if we're really good in the regular season, like a top two, three seed maybe, I mean, it's, it's – it's, I mean, with, with the competition in the Eastern Conference now 
it's like it's it's gonna be tough but we made the fifth seed we got we we did better than like the good teams like the bulls the hawks the Cavs, you know the hornets so i think we can definitely do better be, especially because in the playoffs scotty barnes got injured and then van vliet had a knee issue and then like Ananobi had like a rip something something going on so we were injured in the playoffs and obviously you don't want that so that's kind of why we went down 3-0 and then when Scotty Barnes was still partly injured and Van Vliet was also part, we still managed to get two games out of them. So if we're fully healthy, like the Bucks were when they won, I think we can definitely win. Yeah. And kind of talking about the big stars in the league, Kevin Durant, we're going to talk about the other one who's currently in the World Conference, LeBron James. So yesterday, LeBron became eligible to sign a two-year, $97 million contract extension with the Lakers. Uh, he reportedly really enjoys Los Angeles, both basketball-wise for the team and lifestyle-wise. Um, I can see why. And his only reason for leaving right now, he reportedly said it would only be to play with Bronny, which would be in two years from now. Um, so do you – or three, actually. Kind of a while if you think about it. But do you – and the, the Lakers also want to keep LeBron. Uh, they don't – they haven't in any trade talks that have kind of been there for like – Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, they have not included LeBron and basically kept him off everything. So do you think that LeBron is going to sign this extension? Um, or no, he's going to like wait it out till next year and see what we can see what's happening. I mean, if I were him, I, I would wait because you don't know how good the, like, the Lakers could be a complete failure next season again, or they could be like really good. I mean, depending on, you know, what the whole Kyrie thing, like, will they get rid of Russell Westbrook? Or maybe Russell Westbrook, maybe he'll play good next season. I don't know. But um, honestly, that'll be crazy if you had like a LeBron James for Kevin Durant trade. Like that'll be like huge. But um, I definitely think that he should wait for a year because, yeah, again, you don't know how he's going to do with the team next year. So what if he signs it now, the team does bad next year. And then he's like, OK, so why did I sign this extension? OK, he gets paid like 50 million. This, he probably, he's a billionaire. He has like enough money to like for like an entire state or something. So like, he's fine. Like money wise, he's not like broke or anything unless he really spends like, I don't know, millions of dollars a day. So I definitely think that he should wait. Yeah. I kind of agree also with the waiting. Cause first of all, we don't know how Anthony Davis is going to be next year. We don't know how Russell Westbrook's going to be next year. The Lakers haven't really signed anybody new. They're still, as you like to say, they're still a retirement home in a lot of ways. So I don't think that it's just as easy as like, oh, yeah, let me stay here until Bronny comes into the league um, and, you know, go wherever he goes. Because I think he's still, even though he just says he doesn't care, in the back of his mind, he's got to be thinking about, I have four rings, MJ has six rings, and I want to be the GOAT to most people. So he's definitely thinking about competing um, every season. And he's got to know, like, I don't have that many years left, so I got to make every season count. So I personally would not sign that extension. But with, the, but with the Lakers, like, I'm checking right now, like, they signed a lot of young guys in the offseason. Although it's not they, – they signed from the Warriors, Juan Toscano Anderson. They signed Shroy Brown Jr., who's young. Thomas Bryant from the Wizards, who's their center, who's young. Damian Jones is a center who's young. And Lonnie Walker from the Spurs, who's also young. So, if the Lakers can kind of put their young guys in more and save, you know, the old guys from playing a lot. Um, I mean – with, I mean, I, you're adding like Damian Jones and um, and Thomas Bryant, who are two really good centers. So if you include a deal where like you trade away like like Dwight Howard or something, you can get rid of your old centers, bring in some young centers, and uh, you can start like building up. And if next year can is like a play-in season where you know the the young guys are still developing, and, and you know it's like LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and then a bunch of like twenty year olds on a team. Like, I would rather have that than, like, what's Russell Westbrook on the team. So, but Kyrie Irving wouldn't be a bad idea. But I, I honestly feel like, like, these, like, big, like, super teams are, like, now, at, like, think about it. In the last 10 years, other than KD and the Warriors, you haven't had a, a super team that's, like, bit, like, been really good. Like, Kyrie, KD, and Harden. You, know? you don't think the Heat were a super team? Huh? Like LeBron, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade. I mean, that kind of works. Yeah, but I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm not I'm not saying like all super teams don't work. But I'm talking about like most of them. Like the Nets didn't really work out. Like the Lakers just now didn't work out. You you had like, um, I don't even, um, 
I think. There was some I mean, more than 2020, 2022. Um, yeah, I, I already forgot, but like, the, the, yeah, like the, just like the, the thing is like, not all super teams are going to work out. So you're technically taking a risk because you, it's, although like, what, like, yeah, if you, let's say you have like Kyrie, Curry and KD, that's like ridiculous. Like, I don't think there's going to be good chemistry there. So it's all about chemistry. Now Westbrook, LeBron, Anthony Davis, although they may not, they may have not done good. They have good chemistry because like, you know, they're good off the court, you know, on the court. Like it's not like they just like didn't know each other, but they're all like superstars. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there. I feel like yeah. I'm trying to think. I can't. I'm blanking on the thing. Well, I guess if you want to even consider like when they like when they brought in Russell Westbrook for Chris Paul and like the Rockets went Chris Paul Harden. I mean the Rockets went Westbrook and Harden as a team with a bunch of three point shooters. I don't know if it's a super team, but like when 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 they kind of just like I guess what you could say is like when you just take stars and trade them to other teams and and add them to your team and hope like two big stars or th- three big stars together is just going to work. Like it, it doesn't work most of the time. It's usually the teams that are like homegrown, like the Warriors with, you know, for, with Curry, Draymond, Clay, or even something like the Celtics now with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Grant Williams. But, yeah. Well, the thing with the thing with the, um, with the Warriors, when they got KD, they, they didn't remove much of their roster. Like they removed Harrison Barnes and Andrew Pogan and all those guys, but obviously that was painful because they're, you know, they were a part of it, but, you still had your big three in Draymond Curry and Clay. You still had your bench. You had the same team, maybe minus a few guys that were old and retired, but you you had the same team. So, I mean, the chemistry was still there, and you're adding Kevin Durant, who had you know. So, I don't know. And yeah. like, although Clay was good, I mean, Curry and KD were like the main two guys, and Clay and Draymond were like the second in line, I guess you could say. Although they're both like really good. Yeah, they're both. They're, I don't know. That that team was, that was probably the best example of like a like how to do a super team. I would say. Yeah, it was like really balanced. Exactly. I don't think there's a like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I hope I hope the Lakers are good this year, but I doubt. I kind of doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless they like pull off something, I don't know. If they honestly, they should just like get rid of Russell Westbrook for like like a, like a couple of young guys. Yeah. Like, not, not necessarily Kyrie Irving, but, like, getting, I don't know. I mean, I already forgot all the names of everybody in the league, but, like, I don't know, like, um, not, I'm not saying, like, exactly Cade Cunningham, but, like, somebody, like, like young, really good, you know, bring in the mix to LeBron AD, so. Yeah, and I, I don't even think, like, like, oh, yeah, actually, one, I was kind of thinking of, you know what they should do? I thought it's the other day. Colin Sexton would be a good one to get. Like, yeah, especially because he's coming off of an injury. So, and the Cavs didn't give him a good offer. They gave him like three years, forty million, which is according like he wanted way more money than that. So I feel like if they can like dump Westbrook on like the Jazz or something, because the Jazz are just everybody. The, yeah, the Jazz are the Jazz are already a failure. So, and then just get Colin Sexton. I think that would be great uh, for the Lakers. Yeah, like it doesn't even have to be. It doesn't even have to be like super good elite talent. It just needs to be young talent that they can have because they've already got given away all their draft picks until like 2027. So hmm. someone would be good, I think. Yeah. 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 Well, all right, guys. I think it's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thanks for watching and listening. As always, make sure to like, subscribe on YouTube and you know stream and download on Spotify. Thank you guys for 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, we didn't expect it, but keep up with the, keep it up with the support. And, um, you know, as the season gets closer and closer, we'll be coming out with more and more episodes and we'll be mixing in some good short videos as well. So with that being said, me and Aiken, we'll see you guys in the next podcast.